for those of you who may not know, an Ottawa teenager by the name of Jamie Hubley committed suicide this past weekend. He was 15, and he was bullied daily for being gay. Now, the fact that he was a student at A.Y. Jackson, the high school from the neighborhood that I grew up in, it really made this story hit close to home for me. I spent a lot of time thinking about my experiences and the experiences of others. My experience at Sacred Heart, it still amazes me to this day. I was blown away by the seemingly unwavering support that I received from friends, acquaintances, and people that I had never really talked to. I received no negative comments, at least not to my face. However, I'm still haunted to this day by a question. How different would my experience have been had I come out in grade 9 when nobody knew me? Would the people that cited our time as teammates still have supported me? Would my classmates who knew me from class, would they have still respected me? I would like to believe so, but it's stories like Jamie's that lead me to be unable to. The inescapable conclusion that I have come to is that I was so widely accepted based on two principles. One, people didn't know me. They knew me from sports, they knew me from school, they knew who I was. And two, I did not act or look or sound like anybody's preconceptions of what a gay person acts or looks or sounds like. The reality of the latter was made clear to me in a question that I received uh, in the days following my coming out. That question on something along the lines of, so are we going to start seeing a more flamboyant Scott now? I do not blame this person for asking the question. It's a viewpoint that really the media and society as a whole fuels. Um, obviously, my answer was no. Being gay is not the defining feature that makes someone's personality. It's simply a part of someone. Simply a part of me. Looking back, I wonder if a better answer would have been what difference would it make? It is the view of many that the reason for the belief that all gay men and women are sexual rebels who uh, constantly rub their sexuality in your face um, it is belief that this viewpoint is largely because of events like the Gay Pride Parade. I, too, in my arrogance, once held that very belief. This conclusion is brought about only by a lack of understanding. The men and women who express themselves so dramatically at these events, they do so because this is one of the few times, one of the few venues in existence where you can do so freely. Where you can be yourself without any fears of being judged. Without the constant fear of facing slurs or violence. These are people who, like Jamie, have faced tremendous amounts of persecution throughout their life. Can you really blame them? wanting to feel unconditionally free for a day. Our society, we failed, Jamie. We all failed a 15-year-old boy. So he liked figure skating more than hockey. He liked singing more than fighting. He liked boys more than girls. Why did it matter? Why did our society allow for so many people to openly judge him for showing more courage than I could ever dream of having. Why did we punish this child until he gave up on all of us? I feel so much sadness when hearing Jamie's story. I like to think that should I have come out, should I have been tormented daily, that I would have survived high school. I had the love of my family after all. Well, so did Jamie. It was not a lack of love from his friends and family that led Jamie to feel so alone. We may never truly understand why he stopped seeing the good in life. 
But I think Michael Landsberg summed it up the best in an article he posted on tsn.ca about his late friend Wade Bielak. He said, and I quote, I pray that you and I will never figure it out. Some things you don't want to know, and some things you can't ever judge. Even with the support that I have received from my friends and family, to this very date I still feel the effects of a society that chooses to ignore. A society that fails to understand. I have a fear. One that I am ashamed to admit. I am afraid. I am afraid to hold my boyfriend's hand in public. I am afraid to wrap my arm around him on the bus. I am afraid to hug or kiss him when we're saying goodbye. I am afraid to express love for him when others may be watching. To overcome this fear, I need to mentally prepare myself each and every time. Sometimes I'm unsuccessful in doing so. This past Sunday, while we were public skating, I subconsciously pushed his hand away when he reached for mine. It makes me sick to my stomach, having acknowledged that this happened. Jamie loved too. He loved his friends. He loved his family. That much is clear. He even expressed love for those who berated him in what would be his final blog post. Why? Why does this happen? Why is it that people should be afraid to love? In a world with so much war, death, and revolution happening worldwide, is love not something that we need more of? What can we do to stop this? We need to speak out. Everyone needs to speak out. Jamie Hubley, he felt alone at A.Y. Jackson. It was this feeling that led him to commit suicide. Nobody should ever feel so alone. This is why I challenge you, you who are watching this video. Show a message of support to those who need it. Whether you are gay or straight, a man or a woman, no matter your age or your creed, sometimes what a person needs the most is not comfort from friends or family, but a message of support from somewhere they don't expect it, from a stranger. It is because of this that I challenge you. Post a video response. Put a face to the words. Or write a comment. Write a Facebook note. Post this video on your wall. All that you have to accompany it with are three magical little words. I support you. It is not enough to stand idly by while people like Jamie are slowly pushed into a grave. Even if you do not know anyone who is facing this type of hardship, show support for those who do. You never know whose life you may be saving. And while you're doing it, know this. I support you.